Hi, I'm Tom Lydon, editor of ETF Trends, here in New York at the iShares Connect Conference, and I'm here with Dr. James Breach, who's president and CEO of Cougar Global Investments. Dr. Breach, thanks for being with us. Thanks very much for having me, Tom. So you folks are a specialized ETF strategist that has yes. a variety of portfolios, some global in nature, yeah. and, and we don't want to talk about the ETF strategy business because we're hearing a lot about it these yes. days, and I know things are going very well for you, but specific to the markets, kind of walk us around the world a little bit. What do you, what do you see as far as opportunities in the U.S. in a minute? Let's try to go overseas. Well, one of the things that uh, we always start with the U.S. economy, and we start a multiple scenario analysis on the U.S. economy as the world's largest economy and the most important one for understanding capital market behavior. And as we've moved through the past year, we've moved into a more uh, bullish point of view. Okay. Right now, looking forward one year, we have a one-year outlook, we have a 96% probability of growth scenario. That Meaning, sounds like a good thing. It's a very good thing, <laughs> unless you're afraid of the Fed will start to tighten easy more er, earlier. But uh, yeah, the U.S. economy beginning in this quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, fourth quarter, first quarter of next year, should grow at or above trend. What this does when we uh, drive all of our other asset allocation off that as we look at how the other equity markets in particular uh, will perform in that environment relative to the U.S. The other obvious thing is, is uh, people are used to thinking of fixed income as uh, less risky than bonds. The way we model uh, than equities, the way we model bonds, uh, treasuries actually have a 30 over 30% probability of going negative over the next year. Okay. Whereas the S&P 500, for instance, has less than 2% probability of going negative over the next year. Okay. So we're downside risk managers, and the way we think of risk, which is only the downside risk, not volatility. Yes, treasuries have lower volatility than equities, but if you're looking to manage downside risk, as we are, we're uh, we've moved heavily into equities. We were all in equities in our most aggressive. So let's mandate. get specific. You, okay. you mentioned you like small caps, mid caps, Mainly as opposed mid -caps to large caps. Been our largest allocation in our portfolios for the past year, U.S. mid cap. And you're equities. using specifically ETFs. Is that right? We only use ETFs. Okay. Yes. And and as far as choices on the spectrum, there are a lot of choices in the mid cap universe. There are. Uh, we did a review of. We do a lot of work on index construction methodology. This might be too technical for your That's okay. website, but yeah. in any case, uh, so we uh, decided that uh, we moved to the S&P indices uh, over a year ago uh, because the S&P, uh, companies in the S&P have to be profitable. We decided we wanted to own profitable companies, not just looking at them from a market cap weighted. So this limited the choice of ETFs that we might use, we use two State Street ETFs for large and mid cap and we use a um, iShares ETF for the small caps. Okay. Let's go overseas for a second. Where do you see global opportunities? Well, the biggest, uh, the best opportunity for us so far has been in Europe. Okay. Um, we had been, until a couple of months ago, we'd been invested in the UK and Germany, but we, as we looked at European markets, we wanted to get access to Ireland, for instance, which has been doing very well, or some of the peripheral countries, uh, Portugal, Spain, Italy. The problem we had was liquid the underlying liquidity because we're so big in ETF. Yeah. So uh, we also wanted access to the Scandinavian countries and to uh, uh, Switzerland. And so the way to get access to that was the uh, Euro 350 index through an IEV, which is also an iShares yeah, uh, ETF, which we moved into uh, in, during the first quarter, and that's been a wonderful performer for us. That's great. Uh, that isn't, but we, there's some that haven't worked as well that we've done overseas. <laughs> uh, we, we, were, uh, we invested in Mexico. We, we didn't want to be invested in emerging markets, generally speaking. We wanted to get more country specific. And we uh, like the story of the reforms going on in Mexico and their exposure to a growing U.S. economy, uh, Mexican manufacturing and so forth. But um, the reforms have been slower in Mexico than everyone anticipated and the peso has been weak. So our, that investment hasn't panned out as well. The good news is it was only 5% and only in the more aggressive mandates. The other one that has 
work a little less well as um, Japan. We, we like the story of Abenomics and what was going on in Japan. Um, and, uh, but again, the yen has been weaker than, yeah. than would be expected in some cases. And, uh, but we're, but, we're but sticking with those two investments. It, it sounds like a lot of choices and you've got plenty of ETFs to choose from Lots when you get into a global regional area. Yeah, we have, uh, there are six members on our investment team and a couple of the members spend virtually all their time doing ETF research. Uh, Sounds like a fun crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being Thanks with us, much. Dr. Okay. Green.